Today we're going to take a look at how to draw contour lines on a topographic map. There are a set of rules that we need to follow in order to do that. And the rules that we're going to use that are right here are the same rules that you would use for any type of map where you're connecting points of equal value, whether it's connecting isotherms on a temperature map, air pressure on a, um, on a weather map. Uh, I've even seen maps where you had to connect points of equal snowfall or rainfall. And it's all the same concept, it's just the numbers on the map are representing different things. So the um, rules up here, you can only connect points of equal value. So if you look at these dots, you can't go from a 73 to a 68. One line is one value. The lines can never touch or cross. And there's a couple already drawn on here, and you notice that they do not touch each other, they do not cross. Because they are representing different values, they can't touch each other. And when the V's, uh, when the contour lines cross a river or a stream, they V. So you can see that right here. They're kind of Ving as they cross this river. And they also have to go to the edge of the map. So if we're starting with this, uh, say, 60 right here, which we're going to use later, you can't start at this point. You have to go to the edge of the map. Um, and then extend it to the edge of the map on the other side. This map doesn't have any set of directions for what lines they want you to draw, um, but if we take a look at the contour interval, it's 10 meters, so we're just going to go ahead and use that interval. But pay attention, if the directions are right above the map, underline it. So if they only want you to draw, say, the 60 line, then just draw that one. They're never going to have you draw for every single number that's on a map. I've seen where they want you to draw just one line, where they want you to draw two or three lines, so you really need to make sure in the directions you underline what numbers they want you to draw. Because if you draw any extra numbers that aren't correctly drawn, you could potentially lose credit for that, for doing extra work and then having it be wrong. So just make sure you pay attention to those directions. So we're going to go ahead on this map, I'm going to use, like I said, the 10 meter interval and the last line that is labeled right here is 50. So we're going to go ahead and do 60. And before you start drawing anything, the best thing to do is look around the map for all of the 60s so that you make sure you don't miss any. So I'm going to kind of start over here on the left. We've got one right here and just kind of scan around. There's one right there, kind of go up and down and there's one right there. Let's keep going. There's one right there, and there's one hiding right there. So that one would have been an easy one to accidentally miss. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with this over here. Now, the thing you got to be careful of is that your line goes between numbers that are that match up with the number you're drawing for. So if we're doing 60 right now, we cannot go from the edge of the map right here, even though it's really close to 60 it's between 53 and 58. 60 doesn't go between those when you're counting, so we can't come between that, so that doesn't work. So we kind of have to look around to another edge of the map. So we come over here, we can't come in between here. There's 57, there's 64. So right there is where we want to come in between to start our line. So we're gonna just start, and even if you go a little bit bef before the edge of the map, that's fine. We'll go over to our 60. And then a lot of times what I do is I kind of stop and look around for where I can go next. Don't just automatically assume you can go straight to the next number right here. You've got to make sure that the numbers you're going between still work. So we definitely can't go this way because those are 70s. So we are going to go ahead and go over to this 60 over here and make sure your line goes through the points. It's okay if your line touches uh, the numbers for other values, it just can't touch the dots for other values, so just pay attention to that. Also, it's got to be one solid line. I know I'm kind of starting and stopping, but if you look at that, it's all one solid line. That's really important also. So now we got to go to our next 60, which, where did we see it? Um, right down here. So again, we've got to be careful. We can't just go straight to it. Because if we go this way, we're going between 63 and 68. That doesn't work. We've got to go between 58 and 63. So just take your time on these. And this is definitely something that you want to use a pencil on. I know I'm doing it in pen to show you, but it's just so that it stands out against the black and white map. But this is a part of the regions where you definitely can use pencil. Uh, because if you start going down this way and over this way, 
your line has to be one solid line. It can't branch off. So if you have it branching off, you're going to lose points for that line. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. We've got to go up and around 63 between 57, between 57 and 61. And then we got to loop down here between 53 and 61, between 57 and 70. And then we're going to go ahead and cross the stream, the river, to 60. The next 60 that we're going to go to is over here. So we're going to go between 55 and 68, like that. Go over to 53 and 56. And right there, this is where it's easy to, like I said before, if you missed it and just kind of went straight down, that doesn't work anyway because 63 and 67, you can't have 60 going between them. So just you go right over to the edge like that. The next line that I'm going to go ahead and draw is 70. So again, we'll just kind of check out the map for all of the 70s. And there's one right there, and there's one down here. Kind of go along, and there's one right there. So we'll start over on the left again and try to figure out where we can come in between from the edge of the map. We've got 64 and 67, so that doesn't work. 67 and 75, that's right there. So we're going to come in between here for 70. And we've got to get to this 70, so we're going to have to go up between 65 and 74, above 73, between 68 and 75, there's 70. And now we've got to get to this 70 over here, so we're going to have to kind of loop around like this, get that 70. And we're going to have to be really careful. We have to go between 68 and 73. And this is where I said it's okay if you touch the numbers. You just can't touch the dots. So we're going to squeeze in between there very carefully. Go slow. And again, we're going to have to squeeze in between 69 and 72. Like that. And then we got to come down here to this 70. Like that. And... Again, we can't just go straight off to the edge of the map because it's close, because that's 67 and 69. We're going to have to come between 69 and 71 and go right off the edge of the map like that. And there you go. So those are your contour lines that are drawn. Now, we said up here that your lines have to V when they cross the river. I didn't really do anything special to make them do this. It's just that's the natural way that they've had to follow to get to the next contour line. So don't worry too much about making a distinct V when it's crossing. Um, like you can see right here, that pattern is still maintained just by connecting the points correctly. It made the contour lines V when they crossed the river. So this is how you draw contour lines, and I hope that helps you figure that out.